Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. I wanna tell you a little story today. This is the time I thought I missed the rapture. So I'm 15, 16 years old in high school, and let me just kind of set the scene. I've come home from school one afternoon, and no one is in my house. Now, I have a big family that I grew up with, four siblings, my mom and my dad. My mom was always home when I came home from school, and if she wasn't home, then she would write me a note to tell me where she was and when she would be back. And so... I come home and the house is just completely empty. Now, let me pause right there. During this time of my growing up, I had been shown this movie called A Thief in the Night. And A Thief in the Night, fast forward 25 years or so, would have been similar to Left Behind, like the Left Behind series of books and movies, all of that kind of thing, teaching that theology of the rapture. And so I had seen this movie Thief in the Night, and the Thief in the Night is, you know, everyone disappears all of a sudden because of the rapture. And then, you know, they're following these guys around. They're running for their lives. At the end of them, eek, you know, they get their heads cut off because they won't take the mark of the beast kind of deal. And so, you know, all of that's in my head. I'm a teenager. I'm in church all the time. I'm also being a teenager you know, and probably not doing all the things, obviously, that I needed to be doing as a good Christian young man, even though I was a good Christian young man, still being a teenage boy. I come home from school. Mom's not there. Siblings aren't there. No one's there. And my fear-based, fearful thought was, I've missed the rapture. Jesus has come back and I've been left. Now, that's not funny because that could literally happen. But point being is there was fear running through my heart. And so the only thing I knew to do was pick up the telephone and call my sister-in-law, who was, you know, three, four, five years older than I was. And next to, you know, God, the most saintly woman I knew at the time. And so I figured if I call her, and she answers, I'll be okay. And sure enough, I dial her number. I knew she'd be home because she had just had my nephew. And so I'm, I'm thinking, man, this is going to be safe. And I'm just praying as I'm, I dial the number and I'm waiting for her. You notice I did my fingers like this, by the way, because I think we still may have had rotary dials at this time. And so I'm dialing the number and I'm just waiting and praying, oh God, I hope she picks up. And sure enough, she picked up. Obviously, I'm still here. So she picks up and I kind of then realize I don't have anything to talk about with her. And I kind of, hey, how's it going? You know, <laughs> kind of deal. And, uh, but she was keen to pick up. Why are you calling me? And I, oh, I just check and see what's going on. You know, well, she didn't fall for that. And she says to me, you thought you missed the rapture. And sure enough, obviously she was dead right, you know, and I'm kind of him hauling around and trying to change the subject, you know. I need to pray with you right now, you know, is what she's telling me. And so I thought at that point, right, I had missed the rapture and, and missed God somehow. And the thing is, for years and years and years and years, I lived under this fear-based mentality that somehow I had something to do with my salvation and whether I would recognize and see the coming of the Lord at some point. Here's the interesting thing as I've studied scripture over the years is that honestly, we can compare the time of Jesus with the same time now. For instance, the Jews, some of them missed the coming of the Lord. And they missed God coming and being in their midst. And you would think, and we would all probably say this, well, if Jesus were there and I saw him, then I would surely believe. And, you know, you would think that they would have believed that that was God. And that's why they crucified him. They didn't crucify Jesus. And let's be perfectly clear. It was the synagogue and religious leaders that crucified Jesus. They just used 
the weaponry and the government of the Roman Empire to have it done for them. But they're the ones that sentence him. The, the leaders of the Roman Empire wanted to give him back and say, I don't, you know, uh, Pilate said, I don't find any fault in him. And so they're the ones, the religious leaders, the ones that said they loved God. Even Saul, who later becomes Paul, he was out tormenting Christians or believers in the Messiah. And, you know, he, he was doing it in the name of God. Sometimes we do things in the name of God religiously, but we're missing God the whole time. And so they were missing, quote unquote, lack of a better term here, the rapture of God, the coming of God into the earth. And, and it was just like now is that we can miss, and it may not be a rapture, it may not be in a moment in the twinkling of an eye kind of thing, we can miss God. Because sometimes we put our faith in our own ability. How do you know you're ready for the return of the Lord? It's an easy question. And it's not, did you sin this week? I can almost guarantee you, you've sinned this week, as have I. I can almost guarantee you, you're going to sin next week, tomorrow, today even, whatever the case may be. You sinning or not sinning is not what's going to cause you to miss God's return. Let me explain that real clearly here. Because if it were up to us, sinning and not sinning, then we wouldn't share the scripture that Paul writes in his letter. And he says, you know, it's by faith alone and the works of Christ that brings salvation to us. So that no one, not me, not you, not anyone could boast of their own works of like, oh, look, I've lived a sinless life. Or, or I, you know, God saved me, but yeah, now I'm doing all the work by not sinning. Sorry, folks. <laughs> I promise you, you're either struggling to not sin or you are sinning. And the sins may change over time. It may not be the same sins that I had when I was a teenage boy, but there are other sins. You know, I promise you at times, all of us are murdering people every day. These are the words of Jesus. We're not physically killing them with a knife or a gun or strangling them or something like that. We're killing them with our words. That's what Jesus said. And if we even speak ill of another person, we're murdering them. You know, we've got to remove this whole idea that somehow we can earn our salvation. We know that we will recognize God. Again, I say this video after video loving God with all of our heart, soul, and strength, and loving our neighbors as ourself, period. Listen, it's the love of God that transforms our lives. It's God and God alone that brings salvation. I don't have to live in fear of missing a rapture. The book of Revelation is not a code book for us to try to decipher what God was trying. He's got like some hidden message in it. And if we just line up all the words in the right place, then they're going to spell out some. Ma That's not what it is. The word revelation is the Greek word that we get for apocalypse. Apocalypse. Apocalypse does not mean end times or destruction. That's not what it means. That's what it's morphed into. Apocalypse means revelation. And it says it in the first sentence. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. It's telling the story of the Christ. There is a judgment, and the judgment is from our own statements of faith, that I have faith in God, in Christ alone, not in the other gods of this world. And there's some people that they want to have faith and trust in the other gods of this world, and God will prepare, and maybe already has prepared, a realm for them that they'll exist outside of the realm of heaven and earth. And heaven will be fully transparent 
to all of us who trust and believe in God on earth and will live in what God designed ultimately from the very beginning. Genesis 1 and 2, Revelation 21 and 22. They're the same vision of what God planned for us. It's a realm and it's sadly separate from God's presence. And only God knows how that works. Because right now on this earth, think about the worst possible thing about this earth that you could think of. The, the mayhem and, and the murder and the, the godlessness and all the horrible things that are in this earth. And yet, God's presence is here. Well, there's a realm where his presence won't be. And he'll exclude his presence from that realm for everybody that desires to not be a part of his realm. Here's how we know, and we don't have to call a relative to find out if we've missed the rapture, is if we'll just trust in God and love him with everything in our hearts. And we're going to fail at that at times. But then loving other people also as we would love ourselves. Have faith. Trust in him. Have faith and do not fear and trust in God, and believe in Him only. This nation, we live in the United States of America, can't save us. It's a, it's a nation of the earth, ruled by the gods of this world. This nation will never save us. We'll never get the right leader in place to save us. We have a nation. It's God's kingdom. It's His empire. Trust and believe in that, and walk in it, and be like He commanded us to be. I love you. I bless you with health and healing, wisdom and knowledge, power and prosperity, and the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit of God to be evident and flowing in your lives. I pray you have a fantastic week.